I was spelling the word biosphere down the phone to people. People didn't know what a biosphere is. And so biosphere put not just the word biosphere in our lexicon, but the concept, the idea of what a biosphere is. And you know, that's a, that's a hugely important and transformative idea for humanity that we now have you know, this short form, our global biosphere. I think we all basically have a general understanding of what that means now. And you can really thank Biosphere 2 for that. We've talked about isolation a lot on the show. It, it seems like, uh, yeah, like we, once every third show. Yeah, we've talked about it in in relation to space, yeah. like the International Space Station, mm -hmm. Stanford Taurus to, in a smaller respect, and uh, maybe even on other planets, Mars. Yeah, space yeah. colonization, exoplanets as well. Mm -hmm, we've also yeah. talked about it in relation to this planet because we've talked about uh, living in isolation during a pandemic. Uh, we've talked about seasonal affective disorders that as it all sort of pertained to that lockdown era that, you know, we're in now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's multiple ways to sort of imagine what that scenario would be like. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it's gone from imagining to yes. to real world scenarios. Yeah, yeah, we know more than we've ever yeah. known about isolation, but... We still don't know what it would be like to live in a closed biosphere. You know who knows that? Like there's some people who there's know that. There's very few people on this planet many? who how actually many? know the answer. Well, how many have lived in a closed biosphere for two years? Eight people. And one of wow. them is joining us today. Wow. And her name is Jane Pointer. Jane, Perfect. welcome to What If Discussed. Well, hello there, gentlemen. Hello. It's been a while, obviously, since, and you were such an integral part of obviously not just, you know, participating in the Biosphere 2 project, but also being part of the design uh, leading up to it and really the legacy work after a lot in, in terms of the, you know, the, where that science is being applied now. But I guess the first place to start, and I know it's just such a big question, but what what was your experience in biosphere two so maybe it might be helpful before we talk about how i experienced living in biosphere two just to sort of set the table a second and let everybody know what biosphere two is was right so i was on the design team of this sounds very grandiose but it's true it's we were on the design team of humanity's first attempt at creating the world's first human-made biosphere right so we all live in a biosphere that's biosphere one the earth and we were attempting to create biosphere two the first other biosphere and so it was a three acre and still is it's still going today and is run by university of arizona uh it's a three acre enclosed environment that was completely sealed back in the day it was was sealed when i was in there tighter tighter than the international space station wow. so there was essentially no air exchange with outside and so all of the plants inside the rainforest, the savanna, the ocean, the marsh, the desert, and the farm were creating all of our oxygen. You know, we were creating some of the CO2 for all the plants. And so everything was recycling inside. And we drank the same water over and over again and breathed the same oxygen over and over again. So one of the incredible things about being inside Biosphere 2 was that experience. It was that experience of being viscerally part of my biosphere and really understanding what it is to have a finite biosphere. And for eight people, Biosphere 2 was pretty small. Uh, and it turns out that's very akin to the kind of experience that astronauts have when they see the Earth from space. They see the Earth from the outside in, so they see the boundaries of this planetary biosphere that we all inhabit. And they too have a similar experience of, holy cow, our earth is not that big. <laughs> mm, yeah. So it was, it was an amazing experience. It was also very hard because, you know, as you were talking about in the intro, being isolated is not necessarily the easiest thing. 
No, that's and that's what I think we're talking about. And you just mentioned with ast- at astronauts, I would yeah. think are the most isolated people. But after that, this is a huge isolation. But uh, to go into something like that, really, you know, you really have to have a courage and and some sort of sense of an explorer's curiosity. Obviously, you had that. Why do you think you were so willing to do this? So it, it had nothing to do with being willing. It was like I had to do it. <laughs> I was on the design team. And so was I seriously going to let somebody else go in and test this out? Of course. <laughs> I had to go in. And it was also the closest thing I ever thought I would get to Mars. So for me, this was almost like going in and testing a prototype space base as if we were on Mars. And my favorite place to be was sitting on the beach that we had, looking out the incredible windows that were everywhere. And we were in the Arizona desert and at sunset, the mountains around us turned red. And so for all the world, we were on Mars. So yeah. I, for me, it was living out this extraordinary live stream of of going to Mars. Hmm. And it's interesting you say that because I think not everybody, but a lot of people that, you know, I've talked to about this, you know, they seem to remember or equate Biosphere 2 with, you know, an environmental ecological endeavor, which of course it was. Again, a lot of the science, Mm -hmm. a lot of the recycling, all those things. But in the end, the impetus was what would it be like to live on another another planet. planet, So that was really something that was, you know, let's say ahead of its time at the time. Over the course of the last X amount of years, Jane, you know, you see movies like The Martian. I could go on and on in the sci-fi world. How much and how, I don't know, what, what's it been like for you to watch these people sort of apply some of those things in pop culture and sci-fi going forward as it relates to living on other planets? Well, I I absolutely loved The Martian. Uh, It was very true to life. I mean, as I was watching it, I was like, "Uh uh-huh, that's right. (laughs) But one of the, that's what I'm thinking, like one of the few people who are watching that movie going, well, that's absolutely accurate, (laughs) or that isn't. Well, you know, and of course the author did a really good job of getting scientific input into what he was writing. So that was also very cool. And it was very apparent. So I absolutely loved it. And it's thrilling. So look, I've been in in uh, this, the human spaceflight world my entire adult life. Uh, and, you know, I thought back in the day when we were at Biosphere 2, we would be well on Mars by now. Uh, and at the time, America did have a plan to go to Mars. But, you know, as we know, plans change. So uh, what's been super exciting is to really see what's going on with commercial space and, you know, that that's really taking off uh, in such a huge way. You know, it's sort of almost an overnight success that's been many decades in the making. Uh, so it's, it's very exciting to see that. You know, and I think what's, uh, what's super interesting and relevant about space flight and human space flight is that it has this really unique power to inspire, right? There's really few other things that I think really capture the world in its entirety and, and, and get people excited as space flight does. You know, and, and we were talking a second ago about astronauts and, and their experience of seeing Earth from space. And one of the things that I'm really drawn by is these sort of huge ideas. And so the huge idea of being able to give, being able to give as many people to see us from space, is incredibly important because, you know, with all of these extraordinary global challenges that we have right here in Biosphere One, how important is it that we are based in a global perspective? So I think this uh, human space flight, whether it's with a biosphere eventually or, you know, the kind of spacecraft that we see with the International Space Station is really, really important. Yeah, I, a few years ago, I, I interviewed uh, the late, great uh, Edgar Mitchell, sixth man to walk on the moon. Cool. He, you know, obviously, as you would think, right, somebody who's an astronaut back in the day, well, what, what's their background? Usually they're science people, they're military people, they're rigid I don't want to say rigid, but you know what I mean? They're They're, structured. they're not hippies. Yeah, yeah, Let's just say yeah. that, right? Discipline. Well, he comes back from having that experience. And he, I'm sure you're familiar with this, Jane, but he articulates what Jane's talking about. It transformed him to see the, the sure. earth. Sure. Like, and I don't mean just like he changed, oh, I'm going to change. No, he means he felt rewired from seeing the earth 
on its own. I mean, other astronauts have talked about that, but it, it actually changed the entire course of his life after that. He started the Institute for Noetic Sciences and he he talked about it almost like a almost like a religious experience, Jane. Yeah, so actually that's very common. Uh, and now we're beginning to see what I will loosely say a sort of quantifying what happens to people who go to space and have this experience. You know, I think, uh, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but th there's the um, commentary that, you know, we're going to space to explore space and instead we discovered the earth. Uh, hmm. and, and what <laughs> happens, and now you can see it actually changes behavior. Literally, it changes people's behavior. You know, like me going into Biosphere 2, I was all about space. I'm going to Mars, that's my only focus. Environment, who cares? And you know, when I came out of the biosphere, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yes, I'm a biospherian too. We're all biospherians of planet Earth and we should care and, and it's important. And what you'll see with uh, astronauts when they go to space, it's very similar. They go up, maybe they're involved in, you know, some social activities, a little bit of environment. When they come back, there's a statistically significant increase in the amount of interaction they have with their communities and how involved they get with environmental and social causes of, of many kinds. It really is striking how it impacts us as a human to get that place, understand our place in our global biosphere. So I guess hmm. all we need is to get everybody into space. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you, that's what I'm working on. But that's another story. You were lucky enough to go and experience that. So that's uh, obviously your perspective. There are many other perspectives on the success of Biosphere 2. But uh, like a lot of things, with the benefit of time, we see more and more the value of what we learned from Biosphere 2 uh, as it helps guide other projects and science. And But what do you think is the most important legacy of Biosphere 2? So of course, there's there's many aspects of uh, science that uh, Biosphere Two has directly impacted, and climate change science and biogeocycling, uh, uh, all kinds of particular science about understanding how our planet works. But when I really boil it down, you know, one of the things that we have to remember is putting Biosphere Two in its historical context. So we were designing Biosphere 2 in the 1980s and I went inside in 1991. You know, there was barely an internet. You know, people were hardly, you know, you got to really put yourself back there, right? I was spelling the word biosphere down the phone to people. People didn't know what a biosphere is. And so biosphere put not just the word biosphere, in our lexicon, but the concept, the idea of what a biosphere is. And, you know, that's a, that's a hugely important and transformative idea for humanity that we now have, you know, this short form, our global biosphere. I think we all basically have a general understanding of what that means now. And you can really thank Biosphere 2 for that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And there's so much more, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of, boiling over here with questions because I really want to get into the experience of being there, but also, you know, the social aspect of, of eight people, all the other things, the oxygen issue. Can you stick around, Jane, for a few more questions? Sure. No problem. So excellent. We'll follow up with Jane on the audio version. Please. Yeah, we'll continue to delve into all things Biosphere with Jane Pointer in the extended audio version of What If Discussed. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, just click on the link below. If you're already listening on the podcast, well, just stay tuned. And if you can't continue this journey with us, well, thanks, as always, for joining us on What If Discussed. What If Discussed.